Hey guys, it's Miss Greg here. Um, all right, so the first thing on your checklist today is to make sure that this attendance form gets done. Remember, um, the only way for me to mark you present is if you fill this form out. Uh, the second thing we need to know today that's on our checklist is that we need to read at least half of Tuesday, July 14th. Tuesday, July 14th is a little bit longer, um, so I'm going to give you today and tomorrow to make sure that it gets read. All right, so let's go over questions for Tuesday, July 14th. All right, number one, what does O'Brien make Steve write down? I mean, why does O'Brien make Steve write down the names of the people who he lo loves and who love him? So he writes in his journal about O'Brien making him make this list. So why is O'Brien making this list? Our first uh, testimony in this chapter is Dorothy Moore. So what is Dorothy Moore's testimony and how trustworthy is it? Explain. So what did she say and was it trustworthy? They do talk a little bit, um, O'Brien specifically, about if Dorothy Moore is reliable or not. So that should help you figure out that answer a little bit more if you're struggling with that. Uh, the next person we hear from is George Nipping. So what is George Nipping's testimony? Just give a quick summary of what he said. Number four, what does O'Brien write to Steve? So she writes something very specific down for him. What does he, she write down? Uh, why isn't James King going to testify? So O'Brien talks to Steve and she gives him a very specific reason why James King is not testifying. You, um, so you're just wanting to look for uh, that specific reason O'Brien says that James King is not testifying. Uh, why does O'Brien believe Steve needs to testify? So not long after that, O'Brien does talk to Steve about why he needs to testify in this trial. What's that reason that she gives? Number seven, describe the significance of the turning cup. So O'Brien and Steve do an activity with a turning cup in this chapter. What is that activity they do? Uh, number eight, briefly summarize Steve's testimony. How well do you think he does? Explain. So what did he say? And I want your opinion on this one. Did you think he did a good job or a bad job and why? Um, number nine, how does Petricelli use the acquaintance friend trick to make Steve look bad in the eyes of the jury? So Petricelli is looking, is asking Steve if some people are friends or acquaintances of his. So uh, um, what... What do you think that makes it look like for Steve in the eyes of the jury? When he gives his answers, how does Steve look? Number 10, how does Mr. Sawicki serve as a character witness for Steve? How does Petricelli try to discredit Mr. Sawicki in the eyes of the jury? So Mr. Sawicki comes and he testifies before um, the jury in order to help Steve. Um, what does he do that helps Steve seem like a good person? And then what does Petricelli do to make it seem like um, Mr. Sawicki doesn't really know who Steve is? And then we have two more questions down here at the bottom. Um, we are going to see the closing arguments in this one. Um, and uh, I want us to take a closer look. So if you're wanting to split this up in two days, I would read all of the testimonies today and then save the closing arguments for tomorrow because the closing arguments are going to take you a little bit of time just because we're trying to pick out some of those arguments from the two, um, well, from all of the uh, lawyers in this case. So number 11 says to summarize the arguments Petrocelli uses to prove that James King should be found guilty versus the arguments Brig uses to prove that uh, King should not be found guilty. Free for, feel free to add any additional arguments that you think, uh, think that of that could be used. I would recommend adding those additional arguments that might help you in the future. Um, so you're just going to list in one box all of the reasons Petricelli says uh, James King should be found guilty, and then all of the arguments Briggs says uh, James King should not be found guilty. Uh, number 12 reads, summarize the arguments Petricelli uses to prove that Steve Harmon should not uh, should be found guilty versus the arguments O'Brien uses to prove that Steve Harmon should not be found guilty. Feel free to add any additional arguments you think of that could be used. So you're going to list those arguments again that uh, Petricelli uses to say Steve is guilty, and then the arguments O'Brien uses to say Steve is not guilty. Um, 
if you're working with these two questions, well, when you're working with these two questions, what I would recommend when you're reading Petrocelli's argument is to uh, do both James King and Steve Harmon at the same time. It'll make it a little bit easier on you, and that way you don't have to reread multiple times. All right. Well, if you have any questions, please let me know. You can always leave a comment, shoot me an email, or even shoot me a text. You have my number in that um, plan for closure document. All right. Well, I'll see you guys later. Bye.